classical mechanics, potential energy and equilibrium, stable versus unstable. Let's do it. So I found this example in the Taylor Mechanics book and I want to go over this. So here I have, and I made it in real life, look at that. So here I have uh, a 200 gram mass on this pulley and then a string connected to a 100 gram mass. And you can see right there that it's it's obviously in a stable position, right? If I, if I displace it. Okay, now there is another stable position, let's see if I can get there, up here where the torque is equal, see that mass is rolling a little bit. If it doesn't work, it's fine, as long as you can imagine that it could be stable. Okay, but you can see that it could be stable. So let's explore this whole situation. I'm gonna take this down because it's in the way. So I apologize for that. Oh, there we go, that's done. Okay, now we have the whole room. So let's draw this out. I have a pulley uh, with a radius R, and then over here I have mass one, and then over here with the string hanging down, I have mass two. Let's go ahead and write the, that's a, that's a block, the potential energy for this system. So remember, for potential energy near the surface of the Earth, we have MGY. So I have MGY for that one and MGY for that one. But you can see that as this thing rotates, I could describe everything in terms of one variable, the angle theta. And so I want to get the potential energy as a function of theta. To do that, let's call this our y equals zero position. If that's the case, then how high is position M1? Well, it's going to be this distance right there, right? So that's going to be this distance uh, minus this minus that. So that's R, and this is R cosine theta. So I can write the potential energy for that one as a function of theta. It's going to be M1 G R times 1 minus cosine theta. I don't know what happened there. There's a leftover thing. Okay, so that's that potential. And then this one, let's say that this starts off at a position y0, which is probably a negative number. Um, and then as theta increases, this is going to move down. So it's going to get more negative. So I can write this as minus m2 g y0 minus r theta. So that's my potential energy term. Now just imagine that I plot, I'm going to write it up here a little bit smaller, just because so I can use it for other stuff. So theta is m1 g r 1 minus cosine theta minus, no that's plus, I'll put the minus right there, plus m2 g y0 minus r theta. That's my potential energy term. Let's just sketch that, right? Because as if theta is zero, then this has zero potential and that has some negative value. It could be zero, it doesn't really matter. But it is, let's say it's a negative number right there. So if theta is zero, that's one, that's one minus one is zero, and that's zero. So this is going to be some negative value down here. Just some negative value right there. Now as theta increases, what's going to happen right here is that this is going to move up, right? So this term will become more positive, that term becomes more negative, but they're not the same. This is going to become more negative than that becomes positive. So it actually looks like this. And then the other term is going to take over uh, and it's going to go like that. And you know, it's always, this is u as a function of theta. It's always nice to kind of envision the potential energy as a hill. Right? So if I put an object right here, it's going to roll downhill. It's going to go down to lower potential. If I put an object up here, well, it depends. If I put an object right there, it's going to roll to the right. So roll in quotes. But we're trying to find that point and that point of a hill where it would be in equilibrium, right? Because in that case, the force is zero. So we can take the derivative of this function with respect to theta, we can say this. It's not, it's f r, f theta, is negative the partial of u with respect to theta. Okay, now that's not a force, right? Because it's gonna have the wrong units. And it's just too big, sometimes it get too big. f theta is negative the partial of u with respect to theta. So remember, our force is in general f 
is negative uh, del u. Or del, that's the del operator. I call it del. But we're just talking about the theta direction here. We only have one dimension. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of this with respect to theta, the partial derivative with respect to theta. Okay, so I have m1gr times 1. I take the derivative of that and I get 0, right, because it's a constant. And then I have mgr negative cosine theta. The derivative of cosine theta is going to be negative sine theta. So I get negative and negative. So I get m1gr sine theta. Over here I have mg, m2g y0, which is just a constant, the derivative is 0, and then I have negative m2gr theta. So I get minus m2gr r. There's no theta, right? Because I took the partial derivative with respect to that. And we want to find where this is equal to 0. So we're going to set that equal to 0. Um, <clears throat> so if I do that, I can solve for my value of theta. I get m1gr sine theta equals m2gr, and then I can divide both sides by m1gr. I get sine theta is m2gr over m1gr, so that's m2 over m1. Theta is the inverse sine of m2 over m1. And you see right there that I have to have m2 less than m1. So this mass has to be less than that one. I had this as 200, uh, 100 grams and 200 grams because the torque, it's going to be in equilibrium when the torques are equal. This one, about that point, as it moves higher and higher, increases its torque arm, so it's going to have more and more torque. At that point, if the equilibrium point was right there, the two masses would have to be the same. As it moves down here, since it's lower mass and it's closer, it has to have a greater mass since it's at lower angle in order to have the equal torque. So that mass has to be greater. So we can solve for this theta, and you get a position right here. But you also get a position up here. You get two values for theta here. So you get uh, theta 1 and theta 2. All right, there's two, there should be two solutions to that. Now, which one of those is, e is in equilibrium? It's pretty easy to see that that one's in equilibrium. But we can test for stability of equilibrium with the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be equal to uh, the, the if we have concave up, if the second derivative is positive, it's going to be stable equilibrium. Um, I can erase that. So let's take the second derivative. The second derivative of u with respect to theta is going to be the derivative of this with respect to theta. So right here I get m1 g r cosine theta, and then that's 0. And we want to say, is it positive or negative? So if I take my original value, theta 1, was the inverse sine of m1 over m2. And let's say m1 equals 1, m2 equals 2. It doesn't really matter, so that's 0.5. Uh, and then if I take that angle and put it in there, I get the second partial of u with respect to theta is positive. You can test it. And so that means it's stable equilibrium. OK, so I'm, I had planned to do a little bit more here, but I, I wanted. I, this whole non-force forcing make it a little bit difficult. Because for homework, if you want to explore what happens with small oscillations about that equilibrium point, it's kind of fun. But it's kind of difficult, too, because you have two things going on. You have a rotational kinetic energy and a translational kinetic energy. It's not impossible, but you really have to, to work on that kind of stuff. Uh, and that deals with the, the oscillation. You can get it to be looking like simple harmonic oscillation for small oscillations, but that's your homework. The end.